Hi guys, so today I have a fun and possibly slightly longer tutorial for you guys and um, it requires some drawing. We're going to do a cupcake in a teacup and um, I've pre-drawn this obviously and I have also scanned this and I'm going to post it online and have the link available to you guys in the comments, not comments, in the description so that you can download it for those of you who are not comfortable drawing and you can possibly just trace it and then go ahead and paint things in. Uh, for colors, I am going to be using a red because I'm going to make the icing a pink and the little beads at the top like a really light pink as well. Uh, for the teacup, which is like this old-fashioned Dalton, Royal Dalton kind of style teacup, I'm just going to have it white. So for that, I'll probably use like shades of brown to keep with the warm look of it. Um, or, you know how indecisive I am, I might just switch out to get a gray instead, depending on how it goes along. Um, for the cake section, I'm going to be using two kinds of brown. I'll be using a, sorry guys, I don't have the names for these, but when I lay it down, you'll kind of see the idea of, so one for shadow, the other one for the lighter section of the cake, and then pink for the, like I mentioned, pink for the, um, for the icing. And for the roses on here, I'll use a darker version of this red, which I'm also getting the pink from, so it kind of blends in. And then I will also throw in um, a little bit of actually not blue. I'll probably I'll throw in a little bit of orange uh, with the red, and then obviously a green for leaves around here. But again, as usual, uh, these are just suggestions. You don't have to go with what I am suggesting. You can pick your own colors. You can make the icing blue if you wish. It's really up to you. So uh, for brushes, I am using. And number six, four in the silver black velvet and the eight in silver black velvet um, because we're going to need a lot of detail, especially around the beads and then for the florals around here. And a new introduction, something new, I am also going to be lacing the handle with a gold. I have the Winsor Newton gold ink right here and we're going to try it and put it around the handle and let's just see how this turns out. All right, so let's begin. All right, so to begin, I am going to start off with using my number eight. I'm going to dip it in water and I'm just going to get a little bit of the pink. I have some on my palette right here, so I'm just going to use some of this. I just want a very little like hint of pink on my brush just so I can see where things are going and then I'm just going to lay it on and lightly light strokes just putting it on the sheet taking more water and I'm going to lay more at the top keeping within the frames that I have created. Okay, make sure you have your paper towel handy as well. So you can rub off and just <clears throat> easily clean your brushes while you're working. So now that I have that light pink, what I'm going to do is I want to emphasize certain areas with the pink icing so I'm just going to go in and get a little more of that from the edges here and I want to make sure it's not a lot so I'm just going to mix it on the palette let's put that right there so you can see it and then I'm just going to go in the areas where there's shadow so there's going to be a shadow right here so I'm just dragging some pink so it flares up and then I'm going to put some right here as well. And see, I like how it's kind of just flaring out. Let it dry and then we'll go over it. So don't worry about it 
going all over. And then finally I'll do some right here. And this effect can be achieved, again, you lay down your watercolor, um, your light watercolor, and then you go in with the darker. And then it just kind of bleeds into areas. And now um, I will use the same brush that I used here. And I'm going to go ahead and do the brown. And for that, I have, I'm going to start off with the yellow, which is this one. Well, it's like a yellowy mustard brown. I'm going to take some from the edge and just lay it on here. I'm not quite sure if this is the right one that I have, so I'm just taking it from the palette because I know this is tried and true. And I have a little bit on here, so I'm just going to go ahead and lay it down. And I'm loosely laying it down again, water consistency, same as the pink. And I want to try and keep with the frill of the um, cupcake wrapper, I guess. So I'm just going to paint that area, just like lay water in, in that pattern. All right, so now that I have that, oops, there's like some stuff right there. I'm trying to, there we go, it's off. Okay, so now that I have this, let me just take off this pink or whatever that is. Uh, now that I have this on there, I'm going to go in with my number four and I'm going to take this brown that I have. I'm just taking a little bit enough of it on here so that it is dark enough and then I'm going to go ahead and oh I, I guess the pink is still wet so I'm just gonna wait for it to dry a little bit let's give it some time shall we and just wipe off that brown so let's give it some time okay so what I should have done was make sure that there was a little bit of a space between the um, uh, the icing and the cake. So then when I went ahead with the icing to get that flare up of color, it wouldn't be touching and spreading into that. I've given it a few seconds. I'm just going to go ahead because I want this to be, I want the flare up to happen at the bottom so you can see it, the shadow effect. For now, so just keep this in mind. This is something I would do differently if I were to do this again. Just keep the space between that so that the flare doesn't go into the icing. All right, so my cheat method for this is to just go in with my paper towel and just dab the brown out, which kind of works as well. So we'll just go with that. So I'm taking some more of the brown and I'm just going to, hopefully that's still not wet or too wet, and I'm just going to layer again. All right, so this is how I'm gonna do that and it is spreading quite nicely. I really like that. All right, so I'm gonna leave this at that. There's a little bit of brown at the top, so I'll just go and like dab some out. But I actually kind of like it, so if you like it too and you want to leave it in, then absolutely leave it in. I like it. Um, now we can go ahead and do the uh, the inside of the cup, and then we'll do the outside. So for so the whole this whole thing will be similar technique where we're brushing on a light color and then we're going in with the darker color. So for this, we're going to brush on the dark brown that I was talking about. So I'll just take a little bit of that and just mix it on the palette right there so I can see some of it. It gives me an idea of what that is going to look like. And now I'm just going to brush it onto the 
cup. And I'm just brushing it on. And I'm going to do the bottom more than the top. And then with the top, I'm just going to just take plain water and brush it on here and bring it down. And so again, I'm taking some of the brown, mixing it, and then I'm just going to add it at the sides so it blends with the wet paper. And I'm using it to the sides here as well. And so this is why I have brushed it on because I want the gradient dark to light. Okay, so this is that. I'm just going to highlight, not highlight, but like darken the bottom a little bit because this is where the crease is and it's the most shadow effect. And then I'm just taking out all the color from my brush and I am going to just pull down the brown into the bottom. Just paint that area too. And then finally, what I'm going to do is I'll just take the, the number four and using some of the dark brown, I'm just going to add it at the bottom as a shadow. And I'm just wiping, washing off all the color and just going in and spreading water all around so it drags the paint down. Right, so that's that. Just taking a little bit more paint here so I can flatten it out. You can do the shadow any which way you want, so. Okay, so that's that shadow. In fact, just to make it slightly different from the rest, I might just add a little bit of that lighter brown that I used on the cake. Sorry, the darker brown that I used on the cake. And just add it while it is still damp, so it has a slight variation to the cup. And then I will do the handle. The handle is in the similar manner. I'm just going to use the number four for the handle. And I'm using the dark brown. Again, very lightly. And I'm just going to use it in the little curvy areas. And I want to go all the way around. Curvy area. And down here. And then washing all the color off, I'm going to go in with just the, um, the just water and just paint the rest of it. So if there's any damp color, I am getting that flare up of color effect. And because this is like a very shadowy area, I'm going to add slightly more brown to it. And I am hoping I can get that nice flare up of color. It's quite nice. I'm happy with it, I think. So I'll leave it at that and then I'm just going to wash off all the color and just kind of make, uh, get a wet this area more so the color kind of spreads. 
and I get more of that gradient. Okay, so like that, possibly just add a little bit of brown more so it doesn't look like just a line. There we go, that's good. So now I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna go back up and just do some shadow for the pink and uh, then also doing the little balls at the top, the beads rather. So getting some of the pink. I'm gonna go and highlight the areas for shadowy effects. So I've put on a very light shade of wash of the pink on here. And then I've gone in, gotten a little more pink and added some more so that it does the spready effect. Then I'm gonna just take some water on this. In fact, instead of washing this brush on and off, you can use the other number six if you want to. I've just kind of using the same one as I'm going along. And again, I'm going to take some more of the ready pink and just add it here so the shadow is more enhanced. You, you want to get it while it is still damp. Best effects, right? So that's that. And then I'm going to use, well, let me just rest this down and actually do what I suggested you guys do. So using a little bit of the pink, I'm just going to highlight this area again. And then take a darker pink. Or take um, more of the pink on the brush and just kind of put it on there. And then I'm going to use this one and just brush the color on here. Uh, water, I mean. This is just plain water. All right, and so this just drags the color down. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put a little more pink on the bottom as well. Oops. Then, um, again, plain water or very light pink. I'm gonna use it just in the areas here, curving where the little beads are. And then taking the extra, actually, let me just spread this. There we go. Using this, I'm just going to add slight touches right there. So it looks like it's coming out from under the beads. Too much water on my brush. I'm just going to add some water at the tip so it pulls it down and then you have that nice fade to your pink. So we're going to leave it like that and let it dry a little bit before we go ahead and do the beads. Although the beads are dry right now so we could actually go in with this brush, very little pink and just we're just going to circle the beads. We're not going to paint all of it because... We want um, reflections of white, or we want it to look like it's white that's showing up. So let me just, I like, I really need to put my head down and do it. So I'm probably gonna have to pause the video so that I don't mess up and paint the beads fully. 
but let me try to do as much as I can while you guys are still while it's still rolling so this is where the drawing really helps because then you can see what you are painting and so on and so forth okay I didn't have to really pause this is not bad so I'm gonna let that dry and then in the meantime now I think this is dry so we could actually do we could do the flowers right here so for the flowers um, literally guys you can you, you can look at any of my other floral tutorials and do um, any of them or you could just do the roses it's really up to you um, the way I would do this is I'm doing my roses again um, you have the scan of this so you can actually go ahead and just do it exactly like I have it's not a big deal so I'm just going to fast forward this so that it's not taking a lot of time Alright, so we're done our florals on the teacup and now we're just going to finish the insides and then uh, if there's any other touch-ups needed, we'll do that. Alright, so uh, the next thing we're going to do is I have a little bit of grey. I do need grey because of the, um, the inside of the cup. So um, just so that everything doesn't look too brown, I'm going to use the grey. To kind of break things up and I am just mixing some of that on to this area right here and what I will do is I will first lay on just water and I will make sure that it's in the same pattern as um, the cupcake paper and I'm just going to add some at the top make sure you're not wetting the area on the um, on the cake area so that um, it doesn't seep the color doesn't seep in there I don't think I wet this area, so I'm just going to add some on there. And add some on here. And what I'm essentially trying to do is everywhere there's a curve, I'm just adding color in those areas, like where there's a curve. So it looks like a shadow. emerging from the folds And just the edges I'm just gonna highlight that a little bit more and and then there we go so it kind of looks like a silvery wrapping um, so now that I have that I'm just going to take some of the brown 
right here. Just a very light, 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 or not light, but like watered down version of the brown. And I'm just going to ha add some at the edges of the cup. And when it dries, it'll be a light brown. And I want it to be light just because I don't want um, it to dry up and look too, too dark. Because it's supposed to be like the inside shadowy area of the cup. So we'll do that and that's what it looks like. And let's see, can we highlight any areas? Yeah, we can. So a little bit around the beaded area, we could just kind of go in, make sure that it's not too dark of a pink and just add like a layer of pink just to make it look like you're highlighting shadow. All right, and then uh, I'm gonna use the same pink and just add some here. And then a very thin line from here. Same thing on here. And then that's that. And then finally, I'll just do some around between the, the icing and the cake. And for that, I am using this brown. Let me just put this brush down. And then I'm just going to go in there and just add some of the brown and while it's damp I'm just taking a darker like a more saturated swipe of the brown to add it in so it spreads just want to try and mix blend it in as best as you can making sure you have that shadow between the icing and the cake all right so that's good and then what I'll also do is I'm just gonna add A swipe of just to highlight certain areas because this is a fairly white looking mug so when it dries up fully you want to have an idea of what things are where so I'm just lightly going across areas So that's the mug and now for the final, 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 we're going to do the gold. So I have my gold, I'm just going to make sure it's like really, mixed up properly and oops. nothing is there we go and then I'm just gonna make sure my brush is clean 
and just work off the gold on the cap right here and the areas I'm going to highlight with gold are going to be right on the handle and that's just really pretty guys I don't know if you can see the gold from the camera but it's just really pretty. And then the rim. You gotta have a steady hand for this. I'm not going to lie. Otherwise you're kind of messing up. All right, so that's that, and uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to add some of the roses, maybe I'll just add like a few highlights. And then just leave it at that. So this is the tutorial on how to do a tea, tea cup with a cupcake and florals. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, I love to hear your comments below so please feel free to write comments below. Uh, if you want to follow me on social media I am very active on Instagram and Facebook as well so come on out and find me there and uh, if you want to show me what you've done based off my tutorials, I would love to see it. So thanks so much guys for watching and we'll chat soon. Bye.